refer to Table 10.5. Here we go. If the government charged a fee of $84 per unit of pollution, how many units of pollution would the firms eliminate altogether? Again, same kind of idea, but now the government has raised the price. It's raised it to $84. That's what it costs if you're gonna if you're gonna pollute, every unit is gonna cost you $84. So now, well, A says this is a no-brainer. That's a $30 difference between what I can get rid of and what the government's gonna charge me. So that's they'll get rid of this, B will get rid of this, C will get rid of this, D gets rid of this. Gone, 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 no. So firm B on its third unit of pollution will say, at $84, I'll pay the government fine and just put this pollution into the river, all right? Because it's cheaper for me to pay the government fine than it is for me to remove it myself. Firm C, though, they will remove it. They'll get rid of the, these, this, unit, this third unit of pollution because at $82 for them to abate it, it's cheaper than paying the government the 84 D won't go, D's going to pollute because it's cheaper for them to basically buy the right to pollute by paying the government the $84 and dumping this in the river because it would cost them $91 to get rid of themselves, all right? None of these firms get rid of the fourth unit of pollution. So what has happened? How many units of pollution did we get rid of? We got rid of four, eight, nine, ten, ten units of pollution. So you can obviously see your answer here. Your answer is D. 10 units of pollution. So that's how these problems work. And they're actually very illustrative of the calculus that firms would make if the government was setting a price for pollution. Go to three. If the government wanted to reduce pollution from 16 units to six, which of the following fees per unit of pollution would achieve that goal? So now it's a different way of asking it. Right now we have 16 units of pollution, right? Each firm is producing four units of pollution and we have four firms. So now the government says, you know, there's 16 units out there. We know environmentally we'd like to reduce this, our carbon footprint from 16 to 6. How do we do it? What do we have to charge to basically have only 6 units of pollution? All right. Well, let's go back to our problems. If the government charged anything, for example, anything above $83 is going to work. Make sure you see why. All right. If, if the government charges $83 per unit of pollution, th this firm will get rid of it. They'll get rid of it. They'll get rid of it. Why? Again, it's cheaper for them to get rid of it themselves at $54 per unit than to pay the government the $83 that they'd charge them if they, polluted them, if, they, if they didn't get rid of it and decided to pollute themselves. All right? So that's all going to go. This is all going to go. That's eight units of pollution gone, nine units of pollution gone, 10 units of pollution gone. Remember, at a price of 83, it's cheaper for this firm to get rid of the third unit themselves than to pay the government the 83. This firm will pollute, this firm will pollute, so we'll get one unit of pollution, two, three, four, five, six. So if we charge a price here of $83, actually anything above 82 and less than 86 would do the trick, right? Because in that price range, we will get rid of 10 units of pollution and be left with only these four, six units of pollution left, and that would achieve our goal. So let me just say it one more time. Again, when the government sets a price, it's saying, you can pollute, but for every unit you put in, I'm gonna charge you, in this case, $83. So you make the decision to do it yourself, to get rid of it yourself, and not pay me, that's fine. And the reason it's economically efficient to do this is because this firm's gonna get rid of the pollution at $57 much cheaper than the government's $83. So you're providing incentives, you're getting the low-cost firms, the firms for whom it's not, it was relatively cheap to get rid of the pollution. You're getting them in the business of abating pollution, which is just what you want to do, and you're setting a price saying, anything above that, then you have to pay me. All right? So you may be in the government. So now we've done problems one, two, and three, and four gets just a little bit more subtle. The government is saying, if you want to eliminate 11 units of pollution, what price must the government charge for the right to pollute? That's what we're asking here. And so we know that, well, we know now that the price has to be greater than 86, but less than 91. Why? Because if it's greater than $86, the government says, if you pollute, it's $86 per unit. Each firm's gonna get rid of these first four because it's cheaper for them to get rid of it than to pay the government. They'll all get rid of the next four units of pollution, again, because it's cheaper for them cost-wise to get rid of the pollution themselves than to pay the government the fine of, I'm going to argue, something greater than $86. 
This from will get rid of this unit, so now we're down. We've gotten rid of nine. This from will get rid of this, we've gotten rid of 10. And here's the 11th unit we want to get rid of. Therefore, we must offer this firm on its third unit the incentive to get rid of this pollution themselves. If we charge a price of $87, it'll be more economical for the firm to eliminate the third unit itself at $86 per unit than to pay the government $87. So anything greater than 86 but less than 91 would eliminate the 11th unit of pollution, which is what the question asks for. Okay?